we just made this branch, this test branch. Why does it have this particular commit? Well, that's the one we're on. We just added a description. So if you do the same thing for master, you see the same thing because the test and the master both are pointing to the same commit. So to update a branch, we actually already saw that when we made a commit. That's how you are, that's how you update the branch most of the time you get. You make your changes, you do a commit, and that makes a new version, and then your branch labels that new version of the files. And finally, for completeness, we have to know how to delete a branch. So let's delete that test branch. And then if I show my branch that's stretching out to the left here back in time that has a bunch of different commits and they're kind of connected in these different ways that, that is based on the history of how they came, came to be. Now when I say that a branch gives you the commit to give it with all of its history, what that means is when you have just branch one, that's all you have. All you would have is these, uh, all you have access to is these commits in red. Start with the label and kind of work your way backwards in time. These are the things that you get. If you just have access to master and you don't have branch one, you have all these commits labeled in right here. Basically, have everything except the single commit that's on branch one. So, the really important thing that you need to be able to do is, if someone gives you a branch, you want to identify what commits are on that branch that aren't on your other branches. So, in, in this case, this is the stuff that's on branch one that's not on master. And the way I've written it up here is format that Git recognizes that we use in some examples coming up. <coughs> Similarly, can you guys think before I go to it what the commits are that are on master or not on branch one? Is that what you were thinking of? <laughs> um, so all of these three, these are these are on master because as you go left back in time, they're in its history. But none of them are in the history of branch one. And we can go back a couple of slides and see Branch one's history goes this way, it doesn't include these three. So why do you care so much about what's on one branch and what's on another? The point in general when you have the branches is that you want to convert and create some combined code. When someone's made a change on one branch and merge it into yeah, your code. I'm not going to really talk about the details of merging, that could be a whole other talk. Um, but back in time to find what's called the merge base. That's kind of the common ancestor of the branches that you were on. And then it takes all the changes that happen between the merge, merge base and the end of the branch, and it, put, it applies those changes in one step onto the branch that you're merging. So in order to understand these branches, we want to be able to find the merge base and find the changes that happen since the merge base did be able to look at the details of what we're about to do. So here are some useful commands for doing that kind of thing. So I said I was going to get into this not dash dash not syntax. So let's look at that in our repository. So the easy one is if I look at what's on branch one that's not on master. So if I do that with git log, it'll show me just that single commit that's on branch one that's not on master. You can do the same thing with um, what's on master. It's not on branch one. And remember that should give us three commits. So there they are. If it gets kind of long with git log, there's a and all you often all you really care about is a little bit of the seeing a little bit of the description and the and the history. There's this one line option that's really useful. <coughs> And with this repository, I can look at the whole history with the one line option and see all of my commits. It doesn't really make a lot of sense like this, but if I add the uh, graph option, it kind of draws it out graphically for me. And it's, it's pretty hard to really see what's going on in the terminal there, but there's this program. Let's get back to the slides. 
slide. There's a program that comes with Git called GitK, which is really useful for looking at this kind of thing. I think there's another one called QGit, maybe that's the Mac only one. No, you said Linux. Oh, that's a Linux one? Yeah. There's some Mac only one also that's, that's pretty good. There's a Windows only one that's, that's great. Let's look at how that works. So it turns out GitK takes exactly the same options. I don't know about these other programs. You can say GitK, look at what's on master that's not on branch one. And then it'll pop up this nice graphical display with the three minutes up here, yellow and blue. And you can click on any one of these, look at the um, commit message down below. You can, let's see, this is a complicated one because it's a search, but let's look at this one. Here's the one that we did together. You can scroll down and see the the actual change that was made on that commit. So this is so tool for looking at your history. And at this point, we're looking at just the things that are on master that are not on branch one. So if you're, for example, working on branch one, you want to know what you're missing out on, this would be a good place to start. So some, some other stuff that's useful. I told you about this merge base. It's a common ancestor of the base. For a lot of things, so sometimes if you just have a GK and there's not a lot of commits, it's pretty easy to see it. But if it gets, if the history gets long and complicated, you might need to run this merge based command. And it gives you this not so friendly output, which is just the hash code of the, of the merge base. So what do we do with that? Well, um, I told you you could do git log. We actually did that a little bit before. So you get log on that on that particular commit to see what's there. You can see that the the common ancestor is this one that where the commit messages merge branch master into branch one. And if we go back and look at git k, that would make sense. <coughs> that commit right there, one step behind the added description commit. Timer. 
Is it not doing anything? Yeah, I guess I wasn't I'm just not doing my job, that's all. <laughs> okay, 12 minutes. I was worried I had six seconds left. 12 minutes. Yeah, all right. Cool. So, so we'll make a new repository on the server and then we'll connect to it. That's what I'm going to get in it. That's how you make a new repository. Um, we'll make it like demo site.
and I'll flip over to the server, to the git branch here, and I can even take git branch a, there's, there's nothing except that one branch in use. And I'm gonna switch over to that branch right now. Let's put this git checkout command. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me show you. There are no files here either. If I do a ls I'll see it. Everything that's, the only thing that's there is my .git folder. So then the checkout command switches me over to the in use branch, which causes those files to be created. So now, this is the, this is the reason I called it in use, because this is the state I want to be in. I have this branch called in use, which is the one I am using. And there's this other branch called master, Sorry, master's not here. It's push master. We couldn't do it before, but now that we're on in use, we can push the master branch. <coughs> so we go back to the server. We have two branches. We're on the in use branch. That's why there's the star here. And master is sitting there in the background, kind of waiting to be used for something. So why am I doing it like this? Well, um, so I, want to, I need to say one thing here. So we looked at the we looked at the different branches in git branch dash a, and you saw I said these these are the branches on the server. <coughs> they they could be in different places depending on how I've updated things. Each one could be labeling a different thing. What you have to keep in mind is that unless you do the fetch, unless you've just done the fetch, those could be out of sync with what you have on the server. Those are just your local cached copies of what's on the server. So what that means is as soon as you push a branch to a server, you now have to keep track of three different copies of it in your head. You have the original one, like master on your local repository. You have master on the server, and you have this thing called origin master or server master, which is the, it's what thing on the server was when you last synced up to it, last did the fetch or push or something. So don't feel bad if you get confused by this because there are all these different things. But if you look at the names and you use the tools, you should be able to do, um, be able to make some sense of it. So you can use all the same tools that I showed you about the branches for making sense of what's on these different server branches. I'll just look at a couple of these, like just go straight to a kid K1. So if I do kid K, and I want to compare. To see what's on server in use that's not on my GitHub master branch. Oops. Those are the same. Oh, yeah, those are the same. Yeah, let's do that. So, what's on the in use branch that's not on the origin branch one? Well, Opposite of, Git, opposite of Git K, you can see um, a bunch more labels now because we have all these remote branches in use. And basically, you can do all the same stuff to check out what's on your server branches. So I said I was going to merge in a couple of slides. I really want to do that now so you can see the, what the point of all of this is. But just to remind you of what's going on, the code archive is on GitHub, we're calling that origin. We have this production server called server. Um, so I guess I didn't make this thing. We that from that but, um, we're going to go ahead and merge branch one right now. So this is on my local repository. We're on master. We're going to merge branch one into master. And you can see it looks like it succeeded. If we want to verify that, you can go back to my text editor. Tells me it wants to reload the files. So yes, I can see this image tag appear. Um, I have this. I have this server set up. This is what's actually on the production server right now. So we can see our. We can see we haven't updated this the code on the server yet. We're still seeing the old version with you know, no image. But now we'll do a git push. We'll push. branch on the server with the new code that includes the image tag. Um, if we reload 
right now, it's still not doing anything because remember, we're using that branch called in use on the server. We'll go to the server and see what's going on here. We'll still have two branches, one is in use, one that we're on the master one. So what's on master? Well, we can do it, do a diff. See what's on master. that this, this master branch has the image tag. How do we get that onto our in-use branch? So I wasn't going to talk much about merging, but it's a merge. We're going to merge the master branch into our current branch. <coughs> and now we reload the page. See the image there. Ooh. So I have two minutes left, so I <laughs> questions. Do you always have, if you want to merge two servers, like let's say you have a production server and you have a testing server, let's say you're testing and you're happy with what's up there, or maybe like staging, is there a way to send, to have, to get the log on to your production and get a difficult staging? Can you kick off a, a, a oh, So what you can do, actually when I did this git push command, the first argument is the branch I want to push. I can push any branch here. I can push, um, yes, you can. I can push like, Origin branch one, whatever that happens to be, directly to the other server. <clears throat> so you don't actually have to have a local route with it. You can probably actually, if you change that's going to push your local origin branch one marker yeah. to yeah, server's you master. Like, you have to do okay, that. you have to do the fetch. Do the fetch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can blow some interesting stuff away if, you, <laughs> if you're not careful about that. And you use dash f. So this thing with the um, putting the uh, connecting to multiple servers like this and doing the in use branch and master, that's how we actually do it for a lot of servers. Uh, when we have stuff deployed, kind of like a cheap way of doing it. Um, it's like an easier thing to set up than doing Catastrano or something like a Heroku or something like that. Yeah. It's actually, I mean, speaking of Heroku, it's what you're doing with that's Heroku. Cool. Well, I, if I hadn't run out of time, I was going to take it one more step and show how to add a commit, or what's it called, a post receive hook. Does yes. it pause still have 10 minutes? I oh no, the yeah. 10 minutes are gone. No, no. Sorry, yeah. 10 minutes? No, no, no. You can't. No, no, no. We have a brain. We have a brain. Oh, it's better. Oh, it's better. Right, Mark. Let's take a break. He's done. The 10 minutes is for the end of the day. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he's done. Wherever he is, he's done. He's done. He's done.